Can we talk specifically about Manu Ginobili? Because I feel like he's an example of he. I mean, he's like an all-world scorer. I yeah. think the guy probably could have been in the top, you know, four or five players in the league in terms of scoring if he, right. if he was on a team where he was given sort of an Allen Iverson approach where you can just right. fill it up. Um, but yet his role that you guys gave them was very, he's very different than. Yeah. What, well, what Manu was, Ginobili was a, is a, is a kind of a two guard small forward for us, um, and and he was a. Um, just a terrifically talented guy in every area of the game, every facet. Manu could um, fill up a stat sheet. <laughs> he, could, he, could, he could put the assists up, the rebounds. He could, he could do everything you ask him to do. Um, and, and so we asked him to come off the bench and provide energy and provide some scoring off the bench. And, and he did a phenomenal job at that. And he's made a career out of that. And, you know, possibly a Hall of Fame career. Yeah. I mean, especially as an international player, he's contributed to the success of some tremendous teams. So, you know, what I think is a Hall of Fame career, you know, it, it, it's, um, it is possible to, to be put in a role and maybe not a role that features all of your strengths uh, and still do a phenomenal job. So I'm an absolute, you know, Manu Ginobili Kool-Aid drinker. So I just want to know that when you say he has a Hall of Fame level, possibly Hall of Fame level skills, do you, do you believe he's going to get in the Hall of Fame? I do. I do. I, I believe he's going to get in the Hall of Fame because the, the, um, there, there are different categories. And there's an international category. And, and certainly out of the international players and international contributors, he's, he's right at the top of the list. So you, as, as a rule, though, as we, as we follow that, that team analogy, uh, the sports analogy back into business, really, the last thing you want to do is cut somebody. You might have to just put them on a different role on your team. Find a position for them to be successful that helps the team first. Yeah, no, I mean, that's, that's really important. I, and if you watch, you know, the San Antonio Spurs are a great example of a team that is not afraid to cut a guy and to send him or send him to the, the development league or, you know, or send him to another team and then maybe wait a couple of years and get him back when he's a little bit more seasoned and a little more prepared to play in the system. So I, I think you, you have to be willing to let some people go. As talented as they might be, as much potential as you, you might think they have, Send them to another organization. Go ahead and let them learn. Let them grow. Eventually, if it's right, they'll come back. Now, as far as the, the, this whole concept of team building, the next thing we have to do, you know, first you have to create a winning team. You have to go out there and get those right players and, and find the right positions. But the second is we have to have team learning. Mm -hmm. You know, the team can't just, we can't just stay at the current level of knowledge we have and expect right. to, to be more productive or, or to win more often. And in business, just like in basketball, it seems like you have to be constantly improving. Right. So you won the. What was the first year you won the championship? Um, 1999 was the first year we won. So the first year you won was 1999, and then you won again. What three years in, later? In 2003. 2003. So four years later you won, but you had to do different things. You had to make some upgrades, make some changes, change right. some personnel. Um, how do you recommend that companies should create a culture of constant improvement? How, how would you recommend we do that? Yeah, well, that's key. And I think that comes from leadership. You know, really, you always um, show that the leadership is committed to the growth and leadership is committed to uh, becoming uh, better and stronger at every turn. If you've had a little bit of success, it's very hard to duplicate that mm. success. Needless to say, even improve upon that success. So things have to constantly change. If you look at the top organizations in this country, they have a great turnover rate, and, and some of them have a mandatory turnover rate. Some a of them mandatory say, turnover rate. Some of them have a mandatory turnover rate and say, well, every year we're going to call the bottom 10%. Oof. We're just going to, you're going to cut them and we're going to move forward. And, you know, there, it, it is a good practice to um, continually evaluate where you are and to build your strengths. Do you like Jack Welch's philosophy on management? Uh, He's been very successful. Okay. <laughs> it would be silly for me not to like what he's done. I, yeah, no, absolutely. Okay. I mean, do I agree with every turn? But n not necessarily, okay. but yes, I, I like what he's done. This is a, a fabulous learning opportunity. I, I, I love that you referenced the bottom 10% because um, Jack Welch has a system called differentiation where he takes the A players, the B players, the C players. He basically rates everyone, gives them a letter grade. Right. So let's just say that you and I went to work for him and you're an A player. Well, he makes 10% of the people get a C grade. So somebody has to be cut mandatory. Absolutely. And let's just say that I got a t the bottom 10%. For whatever reason, I'm at the bottom 10%. He tells me. He says, hey, you're at the bottom 10%, and if you don't improve by this quarter, 
we're going to move on. Right. And I love the idea of the mandatory turnover rate. You were yeah. talking about a great turnover rate. The point is, we're not going to get stuck because our current, we're not willing to change personnel. Absolutely. I mean, changing personnel is not a bad thing. We look at firing people and we think that we're bringing the hatchet down on their neck. That we're, we're not bringing the hatchet down on their neck. We're giving them an opportunity to grow and to expand. And you know, if we've done our job, we've helped them along the way. We've taught them. We've put them in a situation where hopefully our organization has taken them to another level. They've seen excellence, hopefully, and yeah. they can move on and grow. And then maybe they'll come back when they're ready. 